Remember, with this new card-based system, you're only as powerful as the cards in your hand. A few moments later... I've assembled all five special cards! It feels like yesterday when Matt Stone and Trey Parker announced South Park The Stick of Truth. A fantastic, simple turn-based RPG, which I actually think has to be the only turn-based game I've actually finished. Followed up with the Sick of True success, Ubisoft and the South Park team gave us the Fractured Butthole, which I really need to return to. But now, seven years later, the South Park team have given us a new game, but rather than the turn-based RPG developed by Ubisoft, we've got a third-person roguelike action basher in South Park, Snow Day. I can't hold this pose forever, Dick. Let's go. But how does it hold up? Is it better than the Fractured Butthole and the Sick of Truth? Is the change from South Park's 2D animation to 3D a good thing? And is it as funny as the show? Well... I mean, you're not... You're not like as good as Leonardo DiCaprio, but you're okay, I guess. Developed by Question, a small Californian development team and published by THQ Nordic, South Park Snow Day continues the story of The New Kid, your character from the previous games, as South Park experiences a deadly snowstorm closing some businesses, killing people, but most importantly, closing Skule for the day. Yes! Yes! There's no ski! As it is a snow day and school is closed, the kids in South Park go back to playing in its Stick of Truth theming, with Cartman returning as the Grand Wizard. And we, the new kid, playing with the kids of South Park and joining in with Cartman and his new game, where there are buff cards, there are bullshit cards, Butters is the game master, and the overall gameplay is just button bashy. Speaking of gameplay, South Park Snow Day is a roguelike button masher, or for me if you're playing on PC, rapidly clicking your mouse. Now for those of you who don't know what roguelike is, which is kind of me, but South Park Snow Day has different map layouts, buffs and nerf changes depending on level to level and mission to mission, and it keeps things very random, it's very sort of that procedural generation sort of style of game. Gameplay though was simple button smashing to melee attack or using a ranged weapon. Melee weapons are daggers, which are fast and cause bleeding damage. You've got sword and shield, which is pretty straightforward, or you've got a heavy axe, which deals more damage, but is quite slow to use. It's pretty standard stuff. It's pretty standard, really. Now by rapidly pressing buttons and jumping and attacking or holding down the attack button, you'll do different attacks again, pretty standard. These at the moment are your only options for melee weapons. Your dagger, your sword and shield, and your axe, and each character needs to pick a melee weapon. Now, range attacks, again, you're stuck with three weapons. The bow and arrow, which is a bit of a sniper rifle. The wizard staff, which deals okay damage, but hasn't got a great firing arc. And the wand, which is a flamethrower, basically. And each character must choose a melee weapon. Each hero, or the new kid, also has his special abilities, which in this game are turrets, healing totems, a fart escape, a bull rush ability, and a couple more, but you can only use or equip two of these abilities at the same time. Now, I personally stuck with the fart escape and the healing totem, as I would generally play the support role of class, really. And you can use these abilities with the pissed off meter. The more damage you do or the more damage you take, it will fill this meter, allowing you to use your abilities. However, it is a little easy to forget about your abilities and to keep an eye on your pissed off meter, but thankfully, Cartman and Butters make commentary as you play, so when your health gets low, Butters will remind you to take a break and heal up, or if you keep getting hit from archers out in the open, Cartman will make a smart ass comment about not getting hit. If you can't deal with one fucking archer, maybe you could get a friend who can. From here, it's just bash your way through enemies, complete objectives like finding truck keys and fuel, and make your way through different combat arenas, and at the end of each mission, or each mission chain, there is a boss. But there are combat modifiers that you'll have, but the enemy team will also have the same, as each mission is one force facing off against another. For example, the first mission is Cartman's Kingdom versus Kyle and his elves. So you'll choose your general upgrade cards, which are passive, as well as the bullshit cards, which are powerful abilities, but only have a handful of uses. However, the enemy team gets to do the same thing, and they'll have their own bullshit cards, like turning some elves into vampires, or turning your melee weapons into pool noodles, dealing near no damage, and the game will pause when the enemy leader uses their bullshit card. 
I'll give your mum the old wet needle. Generally, though, at the end of each combat arena or combat zone, you'll find Jimmy, who will give you a free passive upgrade card, which is used for the full length of the mission chain, which generally each mission has about four or five different zones or objectives. These upgrade cards are in addition to the ones that you'll pick at the start of the game alongside your bullshit card. And if Jimmy has nothing but bad cards or something that you don't want because Jimmy gives you free cards, you can use in-game currency, which is toilet paper, to swap out the cards or to level up a card making them better. Now some of these cards can change your wand, for example from a flamethrower to a Tesla lightning wand dealing damage to enemies around you, or your fart escape ability actually can leave a cloud of gas underneath you when you fly away, which can also be set on fire. The cards in this game at first I thought were a bit of a gimmick, but they're actually kind of useful and a bit funny. Throughout each level 2 hidden away somewhere, well generally hidden away, you'll find Henrietta the Goth who will give you tarot cards. Now you get to pick one of these cards, similar to Jimmy's situation, but these cards aren't actually upgrade cards, but they can be used to reset your bullshit cards if you've already used them all already, or you can sacrifice one of your buff cards if you've got multiple, making all remaining buff cards the highest rarity or upgrading them all to the highest level, which yes does come in handy. After you've completed each mission, you return back to Cartman's backyard, where you can upgrade your character's skill tree, you can purchase new clothing, which heads up there isn't much of a variety for clothing, or you can change out your weapons and special abilities at the armorer. But how does the game feel? Is it good? Well, it's fine. It's nothing overly special, and it kind of feels like this game was released at the wrong time. The movement feels a bit loose, the combat is just button bashy and not entertaining, it also doesn't have any weight behind it as well, it just feels like you're hitting nothing, and at least I found the combat not engaging enough to sort of keep me on board. Now, Snow Day is about a 6 hour game to get through all missions, and honestly, some missions take maybe 40 minutes to an hour, but they feel like they just drag on. I was playing this with a mate and one night we got the cliche of one more round bro and it felt like it took two hours to complete the mission and it just felt endless because we just had enemies constantly spawning in, we'd enter new combat arenas and I played this on normal difficulty and using the heavy melee weapon axe didn't feel strong enough to knock out a kindergartner. Now the world and enemy variants are pretty cool I will say. We've got kindergartners, we've got general school kids, we've got tanky enemies, and depending on what faction you're facing off against determines the enemies. If you're facing off against Kyle and his elves, well, then you'll have Ents, which are three kids standing on top of each other wearing a cardboard tree outfit. If you're going up against Stan, he'll have fifth graders for his tanks, which are kind of cool, and it's creative stuff, and it reminded me of just the different enemies that we got to face off against in the other South Park games, like, say, the Stick of Truth. The general gameplay though doesn't have classes with special abilities or weapon limitations, which is where I think the replay factor of the Stick of Truth and the Fractured Butthole came in handy. Sure, it's not a bad idea to simply swap out your weapons if you're not enjoying them back at Cartman's camp after a match, but the overall combat is very button bashy and hollow, and that's your only real option when you're playing Snow Day. If we had different classes that we could change that not only how we play the game with friends, but how we prefer to play these styles of games, I think it could have helped. And let's talk about the animation, and it's a bit of a hard one, it's 3D animation as you can see. But how else do you make a 3D action button basher set in and around the world of South Park? While it's not graphically broken or anything, it is a bit jarring and it reminded me of the first person South Park game that we got on Nintendo 64. But I feel personally that this game should have released in around during COVID and lockdowns. The story and world is all about, well, a snow day, business is closing, school is closed, and toilet paper is currency. What will we do? There are no supplies! Give us the toilet paper, Stodge! Stodge! Get out of here! You can't have my toilet paper! It's mine! And it sings out for a game to be released during lockdowns. Especially too, as Snow Day is a full player co-op game with friends, it would have done quite well to socialise with mates online when we're all stuck inside, with the narrative comedy that South Park provides with people going insane for toilet paper. But uh, oh man, I've been stuck here so long, I really gotta go take a shit! Just, uh... Outside of the gameplay though, how is the comedy? 
Well, it's not bad, but it's not as great as the writing in The Sick of Truth or The Fractured Butthole. The comedy can be wrapped up as, say, a bit of a filler episode of South Park. Like, yes, there are some good liners here and there, but it's nothing as funny as Randy Marsh teaching you how to cover spell. What I did find a bit weird too is how Snow Day has reverted back to its Game of Thrones-esque styling rather than moving on to something else. Obviously, The Stick of Truth was released in and around the hype of Game of Thrones, while The Fractured Butthole was released while Marvel was releasing good movies. So it's kind of surprising that this game isn't trying to riff off other famous properties like Dune, Barbie and Oppenheimer. He's got a point there. But should you play Snow Day? Well, for me, it's fine, but maybe it also just wasn't for me. Is this a 3 out of 10 game that IGN reviewed? No, that's too harsh. 3 out of 10 is basically unplayable. There are some things that they get right, like the card system for buffs I thought was pretty cool. I also like the start of each mission with each faction or army picking their buffs and bullshit cards, which provides variety for the missions. The roguelike system too also provides a bit of a reason maybe you want to go back and replay it. And I don't know why, but I like the idea of Butters being the dungeon master. Yes, there are some laughs here or there for sure, but I think with the fractured butthole and the stick of truth, these games were so good in regards to its story, its comedy and its gameplay, it raised the bar for South Park games pretty damn high. Snow Day will set you back about 50 Australian dollars with Australian retailers and on Steam it goes for 60 Australian dollars which I think is just a bit too much for what it is. Personally if it was set between say 20 to 30 dollars that is your gold area for pricing a game like this and I don't think it'll be long until Snow Day goes for this sort of price on Steam. There is also a season pass which where we'll get new weapons and enemies and clothing and more so there will be some post launch content coming from this game too so maybe it's something to keep an eye on. There is some fun to be had, playing with mates yes you'll laugh and you'll call out enemies and you'll place down healing totems for your allies and such but for me there were some struggles I had playing this and I also struggled to pull my mates away from Helldivers 2 to check this out. Hey so how's the war going for you guys? I can't wait to go back home and see my mom. But whether you've loved South Park since the COVID special, or you remember when Cartman fed Scott Tenem and his parents, always remember to play with each other and play with yourself. Oh, and we've just received word that all Park County schools are closed for the day. Yeah!